Now, what happens if we don't have a graph? And often you're going to be asked to determine the domain and range of a function or relation without a graph. So if you could graph it, we could easily find the domain and range. But what we're going to do in this case is we're going to assume that the relation is not easy to graph or we don't know how to graph. So in this case, what we're looking for is then the restrictions. And remember, restrictions, if you remember from grade 10, restrictions are things that are not allowed. So we're looking for values for x and for y, the domain and the range, that would not work or would be restricted in our relation. So let's look at this first one. This is just a straight line. This is in the form y equals mx plus b. So if we're looking at this, is there any value for x that would be restricted? Meaning, is there any value for x that we would put in this function or this relation and we wouldn't get a solution that makes mathematical sense? Now, if you think about what any line looks like, on this one I could just do a little sketch of what the graph would be. If we're at negative 7 and we have a slope of 3, we got a line that looks something like this. Is there any value for x that wouldn't work? No. Is there any value for y that wouldn't work? No. So in this case, and this is true for all linear functions, that the domain is all real numbers. And the range as well is all real numbers. So linear function, there's no x values that aren't allowed and there are no y values that aren't allowed. So there are no restrictions. So that just means the domain and range are just all real numbers. Any value is allowed. So let's look at a couple more examples. So determine the domain and range, example two. We have this function y equals 5 over x plus 4. So again, we're looking for any restrictions, anything that isn't allowed that wouldn't make mathematical sense. And if we're dealing with a fraction, we know that the denominator can never be 0. That would be a restriction on the denominator, so a restriction on this relation. So if that's the case, if we're trying to determine what the domain is, what the possible x values are, then our denominator, x plus 4, we know that that cannot equal 0. If that equaled 0, we would have a function or we would have a relation that does not work, does not make sense. And so, of course, we can solve this and we'd say that x cannot equal negative 4. And that is our domain that x cannot equal negative 4. Now what's our range? So we have to be careful with these rational expressions or rational equations because if we look at this relation, we have a fraction. So is there any y value that's not allowed or one, any y value that doesn't make sense? Now we've already taken into account the restriction in the domain. Now, remember, if we have a fraction, we're always going to have this 5 on top. We're always going to have a number in the top. And if we restrict the domain and don't allow x to be negative 4, then we're always going to have a number on the bottom. If we have a number on top divided by a number on the bottom, we're always going to get a value. It might be a decimal, it might be a fraction, it might be negative or positive or really nice or really ugly, but we're always going to get a number. There's only one value that you can never get. We can never take a number, divide by another number, and get zero. There's no way we can do that. So anytime we have one of these rational equations, if there's no variable on the top, then the range is always going to be that y cannot be 0. 
there's no value we could put in there to make that equal to zero. And that's our domain and range. So let's look at another example. We're going to look at a radical, so a square root. And if you remember from square roots, what's the one thing that we cannot have? Well, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So when we're trying to determine the domain, we have to take into account that this bottom, or what's called the discriminant, the value underneath the radical, cannot be smaller than zero. So what we're going to do to solve this is you might be able to look at it and solve it, and you might be able to not, and either way is OK. But we're just going to say 2x minus 4 always has to be greater than or equal to 0. So if we add 4 to both sides, we're going to get 2x is greater than or equal to 4, and divide by 2. And we're going to get that x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Well, that's our domain, that x is greater than or equal to 2. Well, what's our range? Again, we have to go back and consider the function, consider what the function is. It's a square root. And if we're taking the square root of a positive number, and we know it'll always be positive, or at least 0 or higher, because the domain is determined that, then the range, you're always going to be taking the square root of a number bigger than 0. If you're taking the square root of any number, you're always going to get a value that is positive. You can't take the square root and get a negative value. So we have to consider this function, this root function, and say that in this case, y is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. And another way to look at that is our domain is going to give us uh, an x value greater than or equal to 2. So if we put 2 in our original function, then we're going to get the square root of 0. That is the smallest possible value in the domain, so the smallest possible value in the range would be 0.